Hi, this is Nick from Canterweld coming at you from our office in Vaughan, Ontario today. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little break from looking at the machines like we've been doing for the past few weeks. And today we're just going to talk about porosity really quick. I got the MIG welder set up because it's easiest to demonstrate it with this. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to lay down a bead with gas and then I'm going to turn my gas, not all the way off, but just way down and I'm going to run a bead on this side of it and then we're going to take a look and we're going to see exactly what porosity looks like. Something to remember is that uh, porosity can be caused by a few things. You can have uh, poor shielding gas happening while you're doing your weld. You can have an issue with oxidization where you haven't cleaned the metal well enough yet. You can have an issue where um, there's debris or grease or something that's getting into your weld that's messing it up. Uh, or with stick welding, it can be that you've, uh, your rods have gone foul, basically. Um, a lot of people forget that once you open up a box of arc welding rods, those have to go into a kiln after a certain amount of time so that they don't soak up moisture in the air. And then later on when you do your weld, it looks like an arrow bar with all the bubbles in it and looks messed up. So today we're gonna focus on doing it with the MIG, like I said, but hopefully you guys will be able to see the difference. And then next time you see a weld looking like that, you'll know exactly what the problem is and you can go adjust your regulator or get a new bottle of gas or do whatever it is you gotta do. Get a wire wheel, clean this up real good. Whatever. So without further ado, we're going to get down and do those welds and then we're going to talk about the difference. Okay, so there is a decent MIG weld with our backing gas. Let's flip this over now and turn our gas off. That's better. Okay, so we did our little experiment. We ran a bead on this side of the plate with perfect backing gas, did a nice little MIG weld. Then we did it over here with no backing gas. And you can see quite a few things happen. First of all, if you watch the footage of it, it does not run smoothly without the backing gas to keep things cool. You find that your wire's burning away. So we have a real awful pattern. You can see the weld is like collapsed in on itself all over the place because the oxygen and nitrogen have gotten into that liquid pool of metal uh, and made it, you know, basically look like an aero bar. That's the way I always think of it. It's also excessively dirty and we've also got a lot more spatter than we normally would. So when you're welding, it feels different without the backing gas, but I couldn't really see how bad it was looking until I'm done and I lift up my helmet. But one giveaway when you're welding is that you'll notice that it's sparking a lot more than normal. MIG welding usually has quite a bit of sparks, but with no gas, it's excessive. It's excessive. And you'll find that you're having a hard time keeping a nice stable arc because you don't have that gas. So when you start to feel that way, stop for a minute. You can always do a stop start, no big deal. But lift up your mask and make sure that you're not doing the whole weld. Because now the only thing I can do with this is to go get the angle grinder uh, and completely obliterate this and try again. And you can't just bring it down a little. You gotta get rid of the whole thing. Otherwise, you're gonna be welding over top of that porosity and it's just gonna keep bubbling through to the top. And that's a lot of work. Either that or you gotta start a whole new piece. Sometimes that's not okay. Sometimes you can't do that. So we're gonna bring the camera in close and I'm just gonna show you guys up close the difference between the two. And hopefully it'll be something that you can help or that you'll be able to see quite easily. Okay, so here's our good MIG weld. It's the best I could do. I haven't MIG welded in about a month. But you can see it's nice and smooth. I haven't wire brushed this and there's very little discoloration along here. 
as well. There's maybe one, two, three, four, five, six little blobs of splatter. Not much at all, ran smoothly. Now, let's flip it over and take a look at our side where we didn't use the vacuum gas, and it's a nightmare. Hopefully the camera can pick all that up for you. But here, you can see how the weld is sort of collapsed in on itself. It's very lumpy, there's spatter all over. I did wire brush this one, but it was very brown uh, when I was finished. You can see that this is just not a quality weld. This isn't gonna be holding anything together at all. So when you start to see stuff like this, you know inherently that you have some sort of an issue with your gas. Maybe the line's kinked, maybe your tank is dry, maybe your pieces are filthy and that's what's contaminating it. But this is an obvious clue that something is not running right with your machine. It's too dirty, way too dirty. Okay, so now that we have a visual example of what extreme porosity looks like, Remember that if you're having this problem, it's caused by either your backing gas isn't flowing correctly, you could have a problem with your torch, you could have a problem with the regulator, it could be set too low, you could be just straight up out of gas, uh, or you may have a contamination all over your metal, in which case you need to get your steel brush and clean it up really good. Uh, and that's if you're MIG or TIG welding. If you're seeing this sort of thing, something similar to this, and you're stick welding, it's because your rods have gone foul. You gotta get yourself some new fresh rods that are nice and dry. So when you see this kind of stuff, know that right away, you're gonna have to uh, make some sort of an adjustment. I can think of times uh, in fabrication shops where I was working and you would get this, right? Especially in the summertime, you would get this and not be able to figure out what the problem is. Your regulator's set right, you got a full tank of gas, you got a clean piece of steel, but your welds are coming out like this. And then you realize it's because the guy next to you has his fan blasting and the fan is blowing away all your backing gas while you're trying to work. Or maybe you're outside and it's a very windy day and that's sucking all your backing gas away and you're ending up with this. So when you see this kind of thing, that's what you need to do to correct it. Thanks a lot for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the box down below. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And until I catch you guys next week, stay safe out there. Keep having a lot of fun. Thanks.